What about making your sound better? Hey, what's up everybody? This is Yuja here today with WA Production. And in this video, I'm gonna be taking you through how I made this marshmallow type lead synth in X for Serum. So I'm sure you're all familiar with Marshmallow by now, super famous DJ producer that dresses up in all white, wears a marshmallow mask and all that stuff. Uh, super popular, well known for his um, style, his campy bubblegummy style of EDM, like future bass, future trap type, type stuff. So um, I kind of made a little loop that kind of sounded like that and uh, kind of made this, made a bunch of sounds. And uh, so I'll play you this little loop that I made and then I'll play the sound by itself and then we're gonna break down how I made that sound. So here we go. So anyways, that's like, uh, that's basically the sound. Let me play the sound by itself to, so you can hear what we're working with. So that's basically it. It's a really simple sound. Uh, there's not a whole, a whole lot going on. So, uh, let's break it down. Um, as you can see, like I said before, it's in serum and what we have going on outside of it, yeah, there's not a whole lot. We just have an EQ cutting out, uh, quite a bit of the lows and the mids with a high boost reverb at 20 maybe 19 percent yeah and uh saturator uh with just the soft clip engage that's basically all it's doing it's just limiting the sound and then our uh side chain from our kick so nothing really too crazy going on just eq reverb and uh basically a limiter uh but that saturator might as well just be a limiter so and let's look in serum there's honestly not a whole lot going within serum either so that should make the sound pretty easy to break down but um, basically we have two, uh, our main two oscillators here are Hypa and we have a square wave found in basic shapes uh, wavetable under analog and Hypo you'll find under digital. Um, a square wave is turned about halfway up and we'll be, we'll be using that for tone. We could basically add a square wave to make it more sound more like a square. Um, and then we also have this bend plus minus warp modulator on the oscillator A. So that's going to be bending the Hypa wavetable and we have macro three modulating that um basically so uh macro 3 is just a little shortcut to the bend that's it and then for our filter we have our phase 48 um negative uh right here under our flanges so it's a phase filter um with the cutoff at 50 percent resonance at 50 percent and drive maybe a little bit above 25 percent and that's engaged on both a and b uh both oscillators and then for our amp envelope we just have a little bit of release and that's pretty much it going on the main page. The the A lot of the secret sauce, a lot of the power, a lot of the juice is coming out from these LFOs. And so I'll go over that real quick. So this LFO is providing this vibrato effect, and that's where a lot of the, the secret of this sound is. Um, so we have the way that we, we do that is we open up our modulation matrix and we apply LFO1 as a source to the master tuning under global. And um, we only have the amount up so high, and we actually crank the output quite a bit down too. Because if we have the output up so high, you'll hear that. That's way too intense of a vibrato. So we bring it down a little bit, and off, uh, for as far as the LFO settings, um, we make sure that it, it's set to off, and that syncs the LFO to the DAW's, X, the internal clock of the DAW rather than the internal clock of Serum. So, um, and then we have the BPM turned off and the anchor turned on and it's just basically 10.5 Hertz. I thought that was a good speed, but you can s mess around with it and see what you think. Um, so that's basically with the vibrato all the way up. And then if you turn off LFO one and you can kind of hear it detunes it a little bit. That's because I was messing around with the output over here. So I had it, I had it set right so it doesn't detune it but like if you can get it right where it just kind of just a little bit so i think it creates this like kind of singing emotional effect and it's really awesome I, I like it a lot and then um 
we have macro one and macro three. I'll go over those after I go over LFO two and three. So LFO two and three are basically, you can think of them as one's a transient and one is like the pitch bend, but they're both basically on the master tuning. One is bending down is bending from downwards up into the sound. And then the other one is bending up down. So it's like really interesting. You have this transient, but then you have a bend going upwards. It's kind of like this weird, it's, it's, it almost seems counterintuitive, but it works when you get the envelopes right. Um, and you can set the timing of the envelopes and stuff to change the transient, like the, how sharp the transient is or how long that bend in is. But I'll show you what it sounds like with and without. You kind of hear how there's a pitch bend going inwards. Now there isn't. So that's what these LFOs are doing. And then the last last thing but not least are, are uh, the macro 1 and macro 3. So like I said, macro 3 actually is already self-explanatory. That's the bend. So macro 1 is on our um, FX, our filter in our FX section. Um, and basically that just makes it so when you let go of the note, because the cutoff is all the way down here, but the macro is all the way up here. Um, when you press the note, it goes all the way up, but when you let go of the mo note, it goes all the way back down to zero position. So that kind of just, it kind of curtails the tail of the sound a little bit. Uh, just so when you let go of the note, it doesn't have too much of a release and it doesn't have too many like high frequencies ringing and stuff. It kind of dampens it a little bit. So that's nice. And then as you can see in the in the uh, EQ, in the FX section, we just have a quick EQ uh, we have a shelf on the high end boosting the highs and then a bell in the mid boosting the mids. We got a plate reverb. Um, and you can kind of just copy these settings. You know, it's the, it's only about 20% 20, 20 mix or so and the size is about halfway. And then we have our multiband compressor, uh, like the compressor with a multiband engaged, basically like an OTT. And uh, you could read these settings here. The ratio is at 4 to 1, attacks all the way down, release is at 540 milliseconds. We have the gain turned up. And just so you know, um, I play around with these a lot. Uh, I don't know if people know this. A lot of people, I see uh, a lot of people not know that you could play with these. It's freaking amazing. And so you can really shape the sound with this thing. So that's basically this sound, though. Uh, there's That's basically everything broken down from the oscillator, the FX, and the matrix. Um, so I hope you guys learned something from this. I hope it inspires you to go make your own marshmallow sounds or maybe copy this and use it in your own uh, production. Uh, you could really take this and tweak it and make it your own. This is just a like a basic thing to start with. You can go so much further outside the DAW. You can go so much crazier with the effects in here. Um, there's there's a lot to work with here. So like I said, I hope you guys learned something. It's uh, It's been good. And this is Yuja with WA Production. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.